I wanted to talk a little bit about computer power supplies. Here on my bench I have a 250 watt best tech that I took out of that compact the other night and a 400 watt code again which is also extremely cheap. Now the story with these best techs um, what they had was a poorly designed 5 volt standby circuit and the, a capacitor would go bad after a while and the circuit would go from 5 volts it would jump up to 12 or 14 volts and blow out everything that's connected to it such as your motherboard chipset mouse keyboard uh, anything else that was fragile it would just be blown out by this it would basically kill your computer now aside from that the later best techs like this one I don't think have that problem I still don't trust them but they're 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 not as bad as the first ones uh, they did have good filtering these were good build quality other than that um, they had good filtering on the AC input side the fans still good and they had you know good filter stages good size capacitors now they're still cheap generic capacitors but they're adequately sized this power supply can probably put out the 250 watts that it's rated for no problem now this one here uh, this is an example of a very cheap power supply it's it's way overrated this thing couldn't put out 400 watts on a good day um, very light and thin heat sinks and even the the transformer that yellow thing down there it is actually smaller than the one in the 250 watt best tech that's another clue now notice the big bare spot on the circuit board that's normally where you would see the input stage filtering that prevents uh, noise from going back onto your electrical line and messing with other things that you use especially if you're a guy like me that still uses AM radios once in a while or some t sensitive test equipment a power supply like this will really uh, put some noise in your line and uh, they also have smaller filtering and undersized cheap capacitors in fact almost every cap in this power supply is bulging on top because they're all toasted now that's another story but it's basically from uh, a incomplete electrolyte formula that was a counterfeit formula that was stolen from one company and got spread around from several other companies and they all had the same problem uh, for especially in the late 80s to early 2000s or late 90s to early 2000s they had um, or I want to say even mid 90s to early 2000s even till today uh, tons of computers and some other devices as well had capacitors that failed well before their lifetime and um, the sad thing is cheap power supplies like this are what's in the majority of cases that you buy with the power supply in them uh, even some OEM computers like HP and Dell had problems with uh, bad capacitors in their power supplies and also on their motherboards um, capacitors like G Luxon uh, Fujiu or however you pronounce it um, some other bad ones oh, let me think uh, there was a, a brand of capacitors called Gloria that there was another one that would blow up a lot uh, let's see what are these the ones in here I think are HECs those are another generic one I try to stick to uh, good quality caps like Nichicon, United Chemicon, Cornell Dubler, uh, Panasonic um, ones that don't have defective formula now United Chemicon and Nichicon did have a couple series for a while that had other defects but the majority of the caps they make are perfectly reliable uh, United Chemicon KY series, uh, Nichicon HM, uh, Nichicon PW those are, are some of the good ones that I like to use in my rebuilds um, I have a lot more I need to talk about on this subject I could go on forever but I'm making my video file too big here already and uh, think what I'm going to do either tomorrow or sometime next weekend is do another video on computer components and uh, why certain things fail and what makes some parts better than others so that's it for now